It's an exciting and historic day here in Garden Grove, California. Thousands of people are arriving to celebrate the dedication of the Crystal Cathedral. We invite you to join Robert Schuler for a Christian experience in possibility thinking. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This television ministry, which extends across the United States of America and Australia and Canada, is overseen by a board of directors, and they had their meeting yesterday morning. In attendance were Richard DeVos, president of the Amway Corporation, Bert Servas from Curtis Publishing Company in Indianapolis, George Johnson, president of the Johnson Products Company in Chicago, Illinois, Henry Block from the Block Brothers firm in Canada, Victor Andrews, from Southern California, along with Vern Drock from our own church board. John Crean, chairman of the board of Fleetwood Enterprises, Lowell Berry of the Lowell Berry Foundation in San Francisco, Ron Glosser, president of the Goodyear Banks, 
in Akron, Ohio. Uh, Bill Bailey from the legal firm in Boston, Massachusetts, who incidentally, along with his brother F. Lee Bailey, have presented to us our new pulpit Bible, and we're very grateful. Charles Kringle, senior partner of Kringle, Swift, and Grimley, Southern California's uh, prestigious accounting firm. After they reviewed the entire Crystal Cathedral financial picture, they drafted the following resolution and have asked me to read it to you. We are able to dedicate this Crystal Cathedral this morning to the glory of God with the total cost covered by cash received and pledges and promises in hand from beautiful and responsible people. Praise God. And with that good announcement, we shall open our programs and participate together responsibly in the litany of dedication. We gather, O Lord, your people of faith, to dedicate this crystal cathedral as a monument to the glory of God and an instrument of service to Jesus Christ. Five years ago, you gave to us an impossible dream. You entrusted to our care and cultivation a creative idea, a divine dream. Today, we give an account of our stewardship. We return the divine dream to you, a star-shaped sanctuary sparkling in the sun. Accept this work of our hands, a glorious gift worthy to adorn the garden of God. We dedicate this church as a monument to the God who hears and answers prayer. We dedicate this place as a house of prayer for all people. Let this sanctuary stand as an honorable tribute to the laborers, managers, miners, architects, engineers, and craftsmen, so the world can see how sacred noble labor can be when offered to the glory of God. We dedicate this church, O oh Lord, as a monument honoring the dignity of hard and honest labor. We offer this structure a shining star as an example to the world of the power of possibility thinking. Let it stand as a strong sermon, silently speaking to the centuries, one single salient sentence. All things are possible to those who believe. We dedicate this church, O oh God, as a monument to the mountain-moving power of great faith. Windows and mirrors, pillars of steel, altar, fountains, seats, and all sacred appointments are striking reminders of the thousands of beautiful persons who have shared their hearts and their treasures. Rich and poor alike, have poured forth their wealth, meager and mighty, to build something beautiful for God. We dedicate this church, O oh Lord, as a monument to the generosity of God's people around the world. Let this crystal cathedral become a star of hope to a hurting world. Help us turn this monument into an instrument. Let this place become a shining, sparkling center, a sacrificial service to suffering souls in the name of our Lord who calls to all persons in the worldwide human family, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. We dedicate, O oh Lord, this crystal cathedral as an instrument of mercy and mission to all the world in your holy name. Amen, amen, and alleluia.
From around the world, greetings are coming. From Australia, Canada, South America, Africa. From leaders of industry, entertainment, religion, and government. From Senator Alan Cranston, dear Dr. Schuler, I would like to add my congratulations. People throughout the world have benefited from the work done by those in the congregation whose time, energy, and money have gone into many worthwhile programs. All of you can be proud of this tremendous accomplishment. I extend my best wishes to you and your congregation as you continue your work of tending to the needs of the people in your community and the world. From Senator S.I. Hayakawa, Congratulations on the dedication of the magnificent Crystal Cathedral. The Crystal Cathedral is a triumphant symbol of the brightest flame of man's genius and imagination ignited by faith in God. It will live as one of the world's great architectural wonders and a tribute to what people can accomplish when they work together through God toward lofty goals and the realization of great dreams. From Governor Ronald Reagan. Dear Dr. Schuler, Nancy and I are delighted to send our greetings and best wishes as you and your congregation gather to dedicate the Crystal Cathedral. Although the campaign schedule prevents us from being with you, we know your special program celebrating the completion of this beautiful building will be a big success. With warm personal regards and again your congratulations. And from the President of the United States of America, Jimmy Carter, my warmest congratulations as you celebrate the 25th anniversary of your ministry and the dedication of the Crystal Cathedral. It is, a ben it is beneficial for our nation to reflect on the spiritual values which have been an unfailing source of strength through your efforts. Many people have been encouraged to grow in their faith and in concern for others. I am pleased to send you my best wishes as you continue to serve God and your fellow man. It now gives me the greatest joy to announce the offering because the entire offering today will be used to build a good Samaritan Inn. There are 500,000 Indians in Chiapas, Mexico, desperately in need of a medical clinic where they can deliver their babies out of the jungle in beds between white linens. Our mission today in this offering is the offering that will launch a million dollar campaign to build that medical relief center. I'm excited that Paul Hostetter, the executive director of missions for our ministry and our church, has been in touch with the Chiapas Indians this very moment, a medical doctor is moved onto the empty piece of property. It is being surveyed. The stakes are being placed. They are where we were a few years ago. And God willing, by November, the construction will begin. And in a few months, there will be the fragile, tender cry of a newborn baby in a clean room because you care. And you heard the cry no one else heard and noticed the need that no one else noticed. Unless you have a special designation, the entire offering collected today will build that hospital. And it will only be the beginning of multiplied millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in the centuries to come that will make this world a more beautiful place for the brothers and sisters in the human family. God will bless you as you give, and I thank you.
Good morning, I'm Jeannie Schuler, and for my father, Robert Schuler, I'd like to extend a special welcome to you as we dedicate the Crystal Cathedral. As my father is enjoying one of the happiest hours of his life, he has asked me to thank you for making this miracle happen. I remember the time over three years ago when the Crystal Cathedral dream was nearly crushed by an insurmountable problem. My father met with contractors in our home and heard the shocking news that the desired cathedral would cost millions of dollars more. Inflation had hit, and the price was too high. I watched his eyes fill with tears and his lips tremble as he dismissed the group. As I heard him say to my mother, maybe we should abandon the idea altogether, I thought God's dream had been lost. But Dad prayed for guidance, and you gave him the strength and support. Today, we see the joy of a dream come true. God's church has been built. The mountain has been climbed. I know there's nothing more my father wants to share with you than the lessons learned through these years. That's why he wants to send you his newest book, The Peak to Peak Principle, as a gift. It incorporates inspiring guidelines that made the Crystal Cathedral a reality. The 177-page hardbound edition has never been published before, and it's just now becoming available in bookstores throughout the country. It contains 22 dynamic chapters that can help you climb your peaks and catch new visions. Some of the chapter titles are Getting Mentally Acclimated for High Altitudes, Three Paths to the Peak, and How to Have a Peak Experience. We'd like to send you this helpful book today. To receive yours, simply write Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuler, Box 4212, Postal Station D, Vancouver, British Columbia. In Australia, the address is Robert Schuler, GPO Box 557, Sydney, New South Wales. As we celebrate the dedication today, it will be especially meaningful to request your copy of the Peak to Peak Principle. The final chapters, including Never Believe in Never, share the spiritual sources of the Crystal Cathedral dream. The never my father would never believe in was that the Crystal Cathedral would not be built. Do you have a dream? Let the Peak to Peak Principle show you how to never believe in never. Write and ask for your copy today. Simply write Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuler, Box 4212, Postal Station D, Vancouver, British Columbia. In Australia, the address is Robert Schuler, GPO Box 557, Sydney, New South Wales. My father will soon be sharing a message of dedication with us entitled God's Training for Bigger Thinking. Later in the program, we'll tell you how you may receive a printed copy of his words. Now, let's return to the service.
we are here at home. And I'm so delighted that now I can introduce to you the man that I want to interview in this beautiful moment, the architect, Philip Johnson. You may be seated because he's not going to deliver the whole sermon. But Philip, how do you feel? A little bit emotional this morning, Bob. I uh, maybe the greatest day I've ever experienced. But I have to share a message with you that uh, maybe Bob doesn't know about. But this structure that you see here, which we architects get some credit for, is due to a greater architect than I am. And I'm not talking religion right now. I'm talking about Bob Schuller. I don't know whether you know this, but if you ever have to get into the architecture world, never have to commission a house or a building, architecture is too important to leave to the architects. It's an early lesson that Dr. Schuller learned, and in our first visits, he outlined the complete thing that you are now surrounded with. He had a vision in his mind that was greater than anything that we architects could bring forth right away. It is indeed, as he has said in his litany, a, a what can happen when people work together, when we have the craftsmen, when we have the designers, when we have the inspiration. This is a result. This building stands today, a triumph of the faith of Dr. Schuler, a triumph of engineering, of labor, of glass, of steel, but for us architects, John Berge and myself who work as a team, for us this is a lot more than a triumph this day. This day is an answered prayer. Now, artists and architects may pray a little differently from you. A lot of our team don't have the same faith that you sitting here in front of me do. A lot of them may not have much faith at all in a certain way, but in our sense, our religion and our secular life are interbound for an artist. For an artist, there is only one prayer, and that is work. Unfortunately, I have the word of the Americas of, Americas of Christendom's greatest theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, who said, laborare est orare. Labor is prayer. Now, to us, as we struggled for the six years that we've been working together for, for Bob Schuller, This has been, of course, the greatest passion of our lives because every architect's passion has one aim, and that is to create rooms like this, rooms where people can get together and increase their sense of fellowship, of togetherness, can increase their feelings of love, as we can in this building. Still further, we believe that the greatest aim that an architect can have is to build for a building that isn't materialistic, that isn't built for mammon, but for God. We believe that this is what we're on earth for, to create shapes like this. And we have a saying in architectural circles that you'll find if you go to Europe, emblazoned over the heads of many a church, ad maiorem gloriam dei. This building was built for the greater glory of God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you know, I, I will feel at home in this place only when we do something we have yet to do. Turn around, shake hands with somebody behind you, and say to them, God loves you, and so do I.
In my message today, the first sermon from the pulpit of the Crystal Cathedral, I wish to address myself to the question, why did God want the Crystal Cathedral to be built? And if there's a skeptic who says, I'm not sure he wanted it to be built, then you'd have to answer this question. Then why did he permit it? I think I know the answer to that question. It is a glorious building. You'll never guess what I did this week. I washed windows. <laughs> I washed them with Windex and with sea spray and with water. And I'll tell you, I salute the window washers of the world. I respect them. <laughs> Why did God want the building built? It was his idea. I think I know the answer. But you probably would get different answers from different people, and you could sum them all together. Somebody would say, well, for the glory of God. And no one here could deny that. But I want to give you a little longer sentence. This church was built. Before I say it, I have to prepare you for it. It may sound heretical, it is not. It does require some interpretation. So if you don't grab it right off the bat, don't turn me off. This building was created for the glory of the human beings, for the greater glory of God. There is within Christianity a certain negative strain that would indicate that if you ever said anything was done for the glory of a human being, somehow that seems in some person's minds to be sacrilegious. I have met Christians who have to say everything is done for the glory of God, everything is done for the glory of God, and of course I agree with that. Who can deny that after all? But. It is done for the glory of human beings, for the greater glory of God. Now, follow me very carefully because it's terribly important. What is the human being's deepest need? It is to recover his lost heritage. Yeah, he is, after all, created in the image of God. And there surges within us a need for self-esteem, self-worth self-dignity, and unless we have that, we are not released from the tensions that would keep us from loving our fellow human beings. In the words of our hymn that we sang this morning, Christ my Savior, help me see this grand possibility, saved from sin's indignity, saved to love eternally. Why was this building built? You'd get different answers from different people. I can tell you one thing. The laboring men would tell you, we did it, and we have pride in our workmanship. Of course, even in the construction, human beings' need for self-esteem was fulfilled. Mr. Johnson tells me he's never seen a better glass job or window job or steel job in his life. And they tell me that you can't find better concrete work than what you find here, all white fractured cement. And the marble people could not possibly have done better work. I have seen them take it out, tear it out, replace it at their own expense. The same can be said for the woodwork and right down the line. You cannot find better craftsmanship not 50 years ago, not 100 years ago, not 300 years ago than you find today in this building. Why? People who worked on this project took pride in their workmanship. It was for the glory of God, yes, and for the glory of the human family, for the greater glory of God. If you want to glorify the Father, glorify his children. 
If you want to shame the father, put down and humiliate the children. I pray with weeping in this pulpit this morning that may God forbid that this pulpit should ever be used as pulpits have been used through the centuries to put down human beings and to demean persons. Why was this built? Different answers from different people, but they all add up to the self-esteem of human beings for the greater glory of God. Listen, I hope that history will record the first text for the first sermon preached in this crystal cathedral. It is Mark chapter 16, verse 15. The words of Jesus, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I say to you, a year from now, a life that's been saved in Mexico in a good Samaritan Inn will say, I know why the Crystal Cathedral was built, to build us our hospital. And in five years and 10 years and 20 years, human beings, not by the thousands, not by the tens of thousands, by the hundreds of thousands will say, I know why it was built. It was in that place that people heard the call to give their life and their substance to share the gospel with us around the world. Now, I have three very important questions on the basis of the text that I've just given. So, what is the gospel? Some would say it is the Bible, it is the Word. I spoke not too many weeks ago, thousands of church leaders in Sweden. And before I began, I was going to speak on the theme, God loves you and so do I, and I left my Bible in the hotel and I said to a gentleman, may I borrow your Bible at my table? And he added me the Bible. I said to the people there, how many of you believe the Bible is the Word of God? And the hands went up. How many of you believe that if you simply read the Word, the Holy Spirit of God can speak to you? Every hand went up. And I said, I have news for you. That is not true. They thought I was a heretic. I said, I shall prove it to you. What do I hold in my hand? And they shouted out the Bible. I said, what is it? They said, God's Word. I said, if I read it, will God speak to me? If I read it sincerely, I mean and prayerfully. And they all said, yes. I said, you're not true. It's not true. I shall prove it to you. I opened it. I have it in my hand now, the Swedish Bible. 62 Salmon. Olen nas hoskut, soker min shirjal sin ro. Fran homen komer min frelungsing zing. Olen nas hanar vanem klapa akta Doesn't mean a thing to me. I mean, it doesn't mean a thing. God cannot say anything to me through this book because I don't understand a word of Swedish. You can preach the Bible from beginning to end. You can give expository sermons and profound theological lectures and have your theology straight, but unless it is translated in the language of human love, it will never communicate. Until the gospel is proclaimed, until it meets the human being's deepest need, which is the need self-respect when we are saved after all we are saved and restored to our original divine intention and that is we are now declared to be righteous and proper pride with total humility is our emotional and spiritual lot what is the gospel? It is the good news that every human being is priceless. Of course. What is the gospel? 
Why does the world need it? For one simple reason. Until you are inwardly secure, you will be incapable of loving others. I have a little book I wrote some years ago, published in the Psychology Series, actually, by Hawthorne Publishing Company. There's a little line I like in there. It says, the non-self-loving person is too empty of love to give it. And he's too unworthy, he thinks, to take it from others. So, until you have restored your dignity through salvation in Christ, you're going to be defensive. Two basic emotions, love and hate, no, love and fear. So, why does the gospel of Christ need it around the world? I have preached this in Korea, and I have shared it confidentially in mainland China, and I have proclaimed it in Africa and Asia and around the world. Every human being needs it. What is the gospel? Why do we need it until we get it? We don't love others. And until we get it, we will never dare to believe that we can do what God believes we can do. That's why we need it. I am somebody great, and so are you. God doesn't give us shabby dreams. <laughs> oh, no. Build a crystal cathedral. Let me tell you something. God's got a dream for you. You bet he does. And you can build it too. What is success? Oh, success is finding God's dream till it feeds your self-esteem, and then you're saved from sin's indignity, and you're released to love and to believe. The past two weeks I spoke in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was given a marvelous plaque. There were a lot of people there, 10,000 and a black man and his wife who were very poor people not many years ago. And then they were inspired to start their own business on a shoestring. Today they're very successful, very successful, by every standard. They gave me a plaque that said to Dr. Robert Schuller, who understands as we do, that success is not measured by what you have accomplished, but by the number of obstacles you have overcome. And then only a few days ago, I was in Portland, Oregon, another great crowd of people. Many of them were our friends whose names appear on these windows. Take the 10,000 persons whose names are on all these windows who built this church. They know why this church was built. Of course they do. 10,000, 12,500 in Portland, and they gave me another plaque. <laughs> I collect plaques, not intentionally, but accidentally. And on this plaque are some of the most beautiful lines I've ever read. When one can enjoy life as Jesus did, help people on every hand as Jesus did, lift hundreds out of defeat as Jesus did and hear God say he is pleased as Jesus did, then that person has discovered the true meaning of success. Do you know what? Don't you dare leave this property this morning 
without being willing to take God's great dream that he has for you. Someone said to me, Schuler, now what? What's your next dream? My answer is, I don't dare to tell you. <laughs> it's not a building on this property. We spent 25 years building our home. It's built. Yes, we need some more facilities, but it's not that. My next dream, it's to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature until the whole world knows that human beings are not to be treat, treated cheaply or shabbily. And every person is a jewel, rare and fair, until he believes it through Jesus Christ lived and died for him. And then he'll take his dream and believe in the dreams God has for him. I have in my hand a, a very touching editorial from the Vancouver Sun. Now in Canada, everybody knows the name Terry Fox. Not everybody yet in America does, but I have been touched by him, partly because my own daughter has an amputated leg. Terry Fox's leg was amputated some months ago because of cancer. And then he decided he wanted to do something wonderful. And he decided he'd try to raise money for cancer research. And he announced he would run from one end of Canada to the other. That's right, on one leg. And so he started running. 100 miles, 200, 1,000, 2,000, 3, 4, 5, and then last week. And he agreed he was going to come here. And he was going to be my guest. And then last week, he was short of breath. And he went to the hospital. And the cancer is in the lungs. And he said to his mother, Mother, I said I wouldn't go to Vancouver unless I ran into town. I haven't made it, but I haven't failed, have I? I tried as hard as I could. And the Vancouver son says, once in a while on the face of the earth, there appears an exceptional human being whose words and deeds restore faith in the human race. Terry Fox is such a human being. You know what? You are too. You can be. God wants you to be. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have lived long enough to learn something incontrovertibly true. Every human being becomes a greater person when he becomes a believer. And any person can become more beautiful if he will open his heart to receive Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord, and friend. And now I pray, O oh God, that that may happen. May people who had no intention of becoming believers be born anew. Oh, Lord, thank you for this place. From it, may the good news go out to the ends of the earth for centuries to come. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.
And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God grant unto you his peace in your going out and in your coming in, in your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. What a glorious service this has been today. Dr. Schuler's message commemorating the 25th anniversary of his ministry and celebrating the dedication of the Crystal Cathedral is truly an inspiration. As a memento of this historic occasion, we've had Dr. Schuler's message printed in a convenient booklet. We'd like you to have a permanent copy of this exciting message, God's Training for Bigger Thinking. The compact size booklet makes it easy to carry in your pocket or purse so that you can refer to it again and again. Or you might want to share this experience with a friend or loved one. The message booklet fits into a standard size envelope for easy mailing. Let us send you a copy of this most special message. Simply write Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuler, Box 4212, Postal Station D, Vancouver, British Columbia. In Australia, the address is Robert Schuler, GPO Box 557, Sydney, New South Wales. And when you write, remember that Dr. Schuler would also like to send you a copy of his newest book, The Peak to Peak Principle. It's designed to help you pick your peaks and scale the mountains in order to reach those peaks. You'll learn to move ahead with confidence, looking up and seeking new paths that promise a higher road with new visions to surpass anything you've yet experienced. The Peak to Peak Principle is a high quality, hard covered book you'll be proud to have as an important part of your library. Each of its 177 pages and 22 chapters are filled with vitality and encouragement. You'll find the challenges and guidance to help you make your dreams a reality. So write today and ask for Dr. Schuler's new book, The Peak to Peak Principle. Just write Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuler, Box 4212, Postal Station D, Vancouver, British Columbia. In Australia, the address is Robert Schuler, GPO Box 557, Sydney, New South Wales. Perhaps as you've watched our program today, you felt that as you look at the mountains before you, you don't have the strength to climb them. Dial area code 714 in the words New Hope. That's 714 in the letters N-E-W-H-O-P-E. -E. Often a heart-to-heart -heart talk with someone who cares can signal the beginning of a new peak. Here at our New Hope Counseling Service, trained and loving counselors are ready to answer your call whenever you need us. New Hope is here 24 hours a day. Now, on behalf of Dr. Schuler and all of your friends here at the Hour of Power, I'm Ed Arnold. God loves you and so do we.